Hi everybody, it's John Wilson here from propertyinvestmentblueprint.com and today I'm excited to be speaking with serviced accommodation expert David Fernley of the Claris Group and David has a very unique spin on the serviced accommodation and rent to rent model that I think you're going to want to hear about and I'm really looking forward to digging into that. So David, welcome to the broadcast today. Yeah, hi John, uh, and thank you. Sir. Yeah, you're welcome. So let's crack right into it then, David. Uh, tell us a bit about how how long you've been at the service accommodation business, and how did you get into it? Okay, we're in we're in year four now of service accommodation business, and uh, we we got into it through. Uh, well, we we gave up. We got to the position of get, giving the jobs up, if you like, the uh, sort of financial freedom, replace your income thing five years ago. But we did that. We didn't get, do it through service accommodation. We did it through property sourcing. And we learned how to do creative property investing and flipping and that kind of thing, Re really through uh, purchase lease options. So we were doing that, and we were bringing, bringing properties in, and we were – putting them into our, our sort of general AST portfolio or packaging them up and flipping them. But then we sort of heard about this thing called service accommodation and um, that, you know, there was potential for more, um, for more cash flow to be made. So we thought, well, we'll have a look at it. So what we did, we put three, initially put three of our properties into that, um, into that, into that model. And we, we, there were two, two lease options, one of our own and we give it a go. And, and that was, as I say, that was about just edging you know, on four years ago, um, and and we 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 did it. We, we didn't go down the rent to rent model or anything like that. We just we, we we refurbished them, put them on. We didn't have a clue what we were doing, and uh, and yeah, we, we we gave it a go. Shoved them on the OTAs, and then went from there. And then all had all the nightmares of uh, of working with people like Booking dot com and and being targeted by the. Uh, by the scammers and people wanting to, to, to have parties and what have you. So it was a very, very steep learning curve from there. And we had to get our systems right and do this properly. Um, so, yeah, um, that's that's basically how we got into it. We, we, we kind of, I won't say accidentally, but we it was kind of accidental. We were doing property sourcing and we thought, we'll give it a go, not having a clue what we were doing. I think perhaps how a lot of people are doing it, they're coming from a property background and really not understanding perhaps that it's more hotel and hospitality business than property, property strategy. So it was a bit yeah. of a, a, bit of a learning, a, a quick learning curve for us. Yeah, uh, I, th I think so. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's a good point you make that it, um, that there's an element of property involved there, but in order to make it really work and get happy customers, um, then, then you've got to be good at the hosp hospitality side, I guess. And, uh, you know, that with the internet, the way it is and the way these platforms are certainly, Airbnb, I don't, I don't know if booking.com allows reviews, but certainly if, if you mess up on Airbnb there and you get a bad review, then you're, you're going to be less likely to, to get bookings in the future. So that's, that's definitely important. Well, you're um, definitely right. Well, yeah. Booking.com, booking yeah, very much so. In fact, Airbnb are easier to work with with, with regards to reviews because you can review the guest as well. So there are, a lot of the time they're a little bit more careful about slamming you. <laughs> Or you know, some, and, and perhaps um, refund hunting down perhaps a bookie dot com guess would be because you can't you can you can answer the review from booking, but you can't you can't go out and really review the the guest. It doesn't stick on their profile. Right. So right. yeah, you can. Interesting. So I'm sure you've you've made a lot of progress in in those four years you've been at it. What, what does your book business look like today? Well, it's completely different than it was. Um, we got we got to a point about three years ago, um, and it was it, it was a point whereby we'd actually we'd been let down again by housekeeping team. We'd we'd got six units. Um, we we were also sourcing. We're also doing some mentoring and coaching at the same time, but it was taking so much time up, and we. Um, we were struggling, to be honest, and we decided that it, we got to the point where either we give up or we do something else. And it's like, what do we do? We've got to scale this business because what we wanted to do, John, we were so tied into the business, tied in with being let down by housekeeping, having no one to do the administration, working with the OTAs, the contracts, 
um, that taking the payments, it was just really chewing our time up. So we decided to scale it. So to answer your question, we've got, we've now got, we, we, we built a business that um, was scalable and that's, we went to the developers. We, we, we realized that it was going to be difficult to work with landlords um, to scale the business because of free older permissions, lender permissions and that kind of thing. Um, so we, we, we went to developer and we've got a very good relationship. We've currently got 35 of our own units, but we've also got six businesses that run around that. We call it kind of our ecosystem, if you like. We've got the core service accommodation business, but off that, we've, we've built um, a housekeeping business which services our own business, but we also service other people. So that brings in external revenue, but it gives us work for our cleaners and housekeepers so that it keeps them interested in us and keeps us at the top of our, their priority list. We source, uh, we don't source any more externally. We, it's, we source for investor partners as we call them. And then what we do is we, we bring them into our program. We manage the properties. We have SA angels. That's a, that's a business that, again runs out it's an administration business based in india we've got a partner of we've got five full-time people over there um we currently administer approximately i think over 100 properties anyway for different people in the uk uh, but the great thing for us is is that we've got that external revenue coming in so we can afford to keep these people going to do our business uh, we do some management for other people um, so we've got this kind of this 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 business that kind of looks after itself now, hopefully. Um, so it's totally different than it was. And we've got we work in Leeds, Bradford, not Bradford too much. That's a tough market. And Manchester, uh, we've hopefully got to move into Liverpool ourselves direct in Q2, probably Q2 2019. Uh, we've got a good development going on there. So we're kind of doing that X M62 corridor at the moment. So, so, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what that's what it looks like at the moment. That's fantastic. That's uh, a really kind of getting to be quite a mature business then, with uh, you know just kind of feeding off itself and the and, and the different businesses that are involved. That sounds great. Um, you, you mentioned something there, OTA. So for anyone who's who's not sure, what what, what what's an OT, OTA? Online travel agency. Okay. Like Booking dot com. Okay. Like Booking dot com or Expedia, uh, that that kind of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just on that, can I just, sorry, can I just go back, John, just, just on that, um, what we realised was that to be able to, we didn't just want our, our business to rely on heads on beds. If you look at a hotel, and we are up against hotels, they have the F&B, they make money on that, they have the, um, the, 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 the sort of, uh, the, the event rooms, that kind of thing. So they bring in revenue through that. They bring in revenue through events like weddings. So they've got all these different incomes that we're up, we're really up against, in my opinion. So that's why we said, right, what are we going to do? Because all we're reliant upon is heads on beds. Mm. Um, and at this time of year, certainly it does get quiet and it does get quite, it can get quite a stressful time because, you know, people aren't really in the swing of things yet. Um, so that's and that's why we did what we did. We thought, what can we do to bring external revenue in? So again, sorry, just to go back on that, that's yeah. something I just wanted to add there for, for people who are listening. Yeah, it definitely is a, a seasonal business, and uh, it sounds like you've found a, a good or at least partial solution to that, which is great. Now, the one thing I wanted to ask you about was that um, I believe that one interesting aspect of what you do is that you uh, you do kind of rent to rent, but it, you know rent rent to service to accommodation is, is almost this kind of um amazing thing that that, that people investors are are kind of i've got the site set on it sounds amazing and everything but it, because there's obviously you know high income potential you don't have to get a mortgage and and, and all of that so there's fantastic benefits there but the, the problem is obviously with the, the mortgage lender criteria and uh, you know I don't, there are new mortgages uh, coming out gradually that that will take service accommodation, but most of the old mortgages don't allow that on their terms. So that's a problem. And uh, so, yeah, do you want to just tell people about how uh, the sort of unique way that you find of getting around that? Yeah, um, we kind of we kind of sort of stumbled on this accidentally, John. Um, when we first gave up the job. If you like, we we got I got an, an opportunity. I bought some 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 land over some land and property overseas, 
from an investment agent, a property investment agent. And we'd kept in touch over the years. And you know, he asked us to do like a, a, an interview for Mail on Sunday, that kind of thing. So we kept in touch. And I, a, friend of, uh, a friend of mine still worked there. So he said to us when I'd, 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 I'd given the job, he said, do you want to come on as a sub-agent for us? So I said, yeah, what does that involve? He said, well, we, we sell off-plan units in the UK and overseas. He said, so if you come on with us, we will open our inventory up to you. It's your own, um, it's your own marketing, your own business, your own identity. You've just got our inventory. So uh, if you want to, you know, if you want access to that, if you want to sell those units, you'll get a decent commission off it. Well, so we make money on it as well. So I said, yeah, I'd love to give it a go. So we, we did it. And we, I'll be honest with you, we really, really struggled. It was a tough market because brand new company, um, we, we had no track record. We had very little, uh, very few um, contacts in the industry here in the UK and internationally. So selling those units on, online, online was very, very difficult for us because what we're doing is we're saying to John, who we've never met before, John, you know, can you send us hundred thousand pounds and we'll, we'll get, you know, we've, we've got a two bed apartment in Liverpool for you. And it's like a real leap of faith for the investors to say, yeah, let's do it. So no, we tough. did. Yeah, we did, we did sell a few deals, but the marketing was extremely expensive and it, it, it was tough. We weren't enjoying it and we said, you know what, we, we're going to have to do something different. And that's the point where we went into property sourcing, right? So a couple of years on from that, we were, we'd started doing the service accommodation and we, had, we, had, we kicked off with the three units. We got to, we got to six um, but we realized that to scale, we, we, we'd need to get more units. And we recognized exactly what you're saying was that you've got freeholder permissions and lender permissions, which are big barriers. Um, so what are we going to do? So we thought, you know what, what if we go back to the developers that we were originally working for and whereby being at the front end, selling off plans to investors, what if we were at the back end and we were saying to the developer, right, what if we, we guarantee you rent? Because their model is that they'll sell off plan for a fixed yield. They call it a short yield. They can't use the word guarantee. They use the word assured yield. So typically they'll sell to an investor and they'll, let's say it's a residential uh, block. They'll say, right, we can, we can, we can give us these installment, these installment payments throughout the construction of the building. Yes, you, you should get, you know, we'll sell it you at a cheaper rate because you're, you're buying off plan and you're shoving your money up, in, up front. But as a thank you, our, our, our deal is that we'll pay you, let's say, 6.5% for the first year. Yeah. So when practical completion is achieved with the developer, the pressure's on. They've got to fill those units because they've got that six and a half percent going to investors, whatever, whatever it takes. So they've got to fill those units. So we thought, well, you know what? What if we went back to those developers who we had a relationship with and we said to them, you know what, guys, what if we take, let, let's say in a development, we take 10 units off you. Let's say we take one floor off you and we guarantee that rent. What if, would, would, you, be a, would you be prepared to work with us? Because the real cool thing about this is, number one, they hold the freehold. They own the freehold. They own the management com company. So if yeah. they say it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. And number two, these are all cash investors. Yeah. So there's no lender. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So it was like it was like light bulb, mega light bulb moment. Right. So we went. We went to meet one of. Uh, Went went to meet one of the developers, and you know we 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 pitched it to them. We weren't, and I'd say this to everybody who's listening as well: you don't have to be a really big operator to work with a developer. I believe, John, that there's a there's a misconception in the in the business that you ha you need to be a really big operator to work directly with developers. You don't. Mm -hmm. We had six units at the time, um, but we but we knew what ticked their boxes, and and because it was a little bit easier for us because we knew. You know, we, we, we kind of knew them and we knew people who they knew. So I could resonate when I met face to face. But that's what we did. Mm. And that's what, that's how we now have been able to scale. So our cost of sourcing is nil. And the time is, I mean, our time spent sourcing is practically going having a look at exciting new developments. It's not, it, it's not work, it's fun, yeah? 
Um, we don't do the agent thing. We're not trying to talk agents into, uh, into, into letting or battle with arguments about is it subletting or not. We're not dealing with planning um, <coughs> queries, but people get so mixed up on. We're not dealing with any of that. And it's really simple. I'd say to everybody who's listening, you know what, guys, you've got to know where to look. You've got to know what to say to them, but you can do it. Now, we had a mentee, we had a mentee who actually, um, who, 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 who we taught this, less, this, this model to. And he went, and a couple of years ago now, he set up a, an agreement with a developer and he had no units. So you can do it, you can kick off and you can develop that relationship. You just got to know what ticks their boxes. So if, if someone out there wanted to, to try and do that, who, who, who is it in the development company that they would try to speak to? How, how, how would they go about that? A lot of these developers have their own letting agency companies. Right. Yeah. So what you do, what, what, the, way I, the way I'd do this to start with, John, I'd go, I'd, go um, I'd start having a look at property investment agencies, people who are selling properties off, off plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then go and have a look at their website. See who the, those developers are. Once you know who those developers are, go and research them. Go and have a look at what they're doing. Go and have a look at, at what they're selling. Go and have a look at if they've got you know they might have a letting agency. If they've got that model of the, that our developer works on, then you know when practical completion gets when that ribbon gets caught, the pressure's on. They're going to want people to, to start pumping money into their businesses. So my first suggestion would be to go and have a look at the agents who are selling these properties and when you go onto their websites and you start speaking to those guys you'll start finding out who they work with yeah. in the area you're interested in and then just start approaching them you know just just talk to them and just explain what you do you know you don't i don't i don't say obviously don't say tell them lies don't try and fool them but you know, just say that you know this is what this is what we do. Uh, this is what this is what this is. They'll, they'll be worried about things like parties. They'll be worried about damage, that kind of thing. The way I I talk to them is, you know, guys, we we're a hotel business, really. Um, so you know, when you've got a tenant move out and it's a complete dump, that isn't like us. We've got to keep our 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 units absolutely pristine because if we don't, we've got no business. Yeah, and and they can walk into any of our units now, John, and they'll, they'll be they'll be sparkling because we have to keep them right. You know, we're up against people. I pitch our our units around four stars, so we're up against the Marriotts of this world or the Hiltons. We've got to be bang on. We've got to keep them right. So you know, you've got to say the right things to them, get them on side, and understand what what the benefits are for them. Yeah, no, it sounds sounds good. Definitely. Um, and to be honest, I mean, you know, I'm sure there are the, the, the odd nightmare, but, you know, I, I have I'm a small service accommodation. I've got two uh, in my portfolio that I run a service accommodation. And um, in my experience, they they treat the place as I would, you know, whenever I go back to, you know, one, one of them is my, my own uh, flat that I used to live in in Glasgow when I was there. And uh, whenever I go back there, it's like, you know, it's, it's like I never left, you know, they, they, they treat it well in general. Uh, oh, yeah. um, so, yeah, so that's the benefits for the developer. What, what about the benefits for, for you? You know, can, can you talk us through uh, an example deal uh, just so that uh, people can see, you know, what, what, this, what are the financial benefits of, of, of running one of these versus, say, a, a, a vanilla buy to let? Yeah, sure. Um, I've not got I've not got a calculator with me, but hang on, just bear with me one second. Um, right, let's. Obviously, there's, there's 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 lots and lots of different types of guests, isn't there? Um, there's, there's there's your travel guests, there's your corporate guests, there's a sector that we deal a lot with is actors, professional actors, and um, they're not. They're, they're, they're not sort of TV actors. They're actors that travel around the UK doing shows like Miss Saigon, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're on the circuit and they'll come to us and, and we market to those guys. Now, they don't pay, the, they don't pay the, 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 the biggest money in the world. But what they do, they might stay for two or three months. Okay. So to give you an example, okay, right. Let's, it works very well when we, we, we have a lot of three bed, three double bedroom departments and we like three double bedroom departments because we can fit lots of people in them. 
certainly for putting zip and link beds in because we can get we can we could we could get probably about 10 people in but we don't tend to do that because you've only got so many bathrooms you've only got so many dining rooms you've got one kitchen so we usually restrict it to about eight people but with an actor typically what they'll want is is one bedroom each so if they pay if they paid let's say 100 pound a night okay um it's a little bit less than 100 pounds a night amanda does the numbers so I think about it's about eighty pounds a night. Okay, so eighty pounds a night for a month times thirty point five on average is two thousand four hundred forty quid. Okay, we're paying approximately twelve hundred pounds on a, on a, on a rent on a management contract on a rent to rent. Okay, that takes us down to twelve forty. Let's polish off. Let's say and these are round figures. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. so don't have exact numbers. Let's polish off one hundred and fifty quid for council tax. And then let's polish off 150 quid for utilities. Okay, that takes us down to 940 quid. We will go and service them every. Depending on we we quote every fortnight. We can do every week if they want more, but we'll charge them. So let's say let's say we've got 100 pounds in um, in housekeeping costs. That takes us down to 840 quid. Consumables. It's not a lot. Take off 40 quid for consumables. That's taking us down to 800 pound net cash flow mm -hmm. for that unit in a month. Now, in my opinion, that's, that's pretty good. We don't get much hassle out of them. Um, we don't get the parties. We don't get the fuss. They can be there. Typically, they can be there from a week, but we've had them up to about three or four months. So if I'm bringing in 800 pound a month, John, net, in, net, net profit, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned like was it twelve hundred? You do it on on the rent to rent. So you're paying the the developer twelve hundred. So what would the market rent for that property be just on a, on a uh, an AST? Right in Manchester, we pretty much pay market rent. Right. Okay. I have I have chipped them down. The thing is with Manchester, let's say it's a buoyant market. Yeah. So I know there's lots of people who say, oh, you've got, to, you've got to knock it down. You've got to get, you know, if you're offering them, let's say three years, five years, you can bring the price down. Mm. It's really tough. If the truth be known, it's really tough because they will go and rent that property out all day long. Yeah, it's, it is such a buoyant market, certainly in Manchester. Uh, it is in Leeds as well. You know, if one of the properties come on the market, we always get, get first option. If we say no, for whatever reason, they'll let it out in a day or two. So it's right. difficult to get it down. Sure. Okay. But yeah, I mean, at the same time, you know, you, you, you've got the benefit of not really having to source these, you're not having any costs in sourcing them. So, um, you know, there's, there's something in it for you and there's something in it for them. And that's, uh, that's the, the ingredients of a, of a good deal, really. So, well, what like, yeah, what I'd like to share with you, John, is that we don't pay fees. Mm -hmm. We don't pay referencing fees or anything like that. And we don't pay deposits. Um, the reason we don't is because, you know, it, it, initially when I went to meet them, I said, look, you know, we're not working under an AST here. We're not a standard tenant. We've not got the housing act behind us. Okay. We're mm -hmm. going to work on a management contract, but it's pretty much business to business. So if we're going to walk away from all those rights, then, you know, we expect something in return. So we don't expect to be paying deposits and we don't expect to be paying fees and we shook hands on the deal. You know, it, it works for them and it works for us. Got it, got it. Um, so, what else was I going to ask? So, yeah, tell me about managing prices, David. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, I've had a little bit of issues with in the past. Uh, uh, Airbnb has something called smart pricing. Was it, I think it's called smart pricing, something like that. Um, and I, I hear that, that, you know, that there were some problems with that in the past, but it's kind of a bit better now. Um, but is that something that, what's your thoughts on that? And is, is that something that can be managed by a channel manager or is that something that you do manually? What, what are your thoughts on price? Right. We, we, we've had a big, big learning, learning experience here, John. Um, if it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this. Um, in such a way when when we started we 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 initially thought right you, you you set a price you just go and have a look and look at your competitors just like you would a standard ast and you, you put it on 
let's say it's let's say a comparable is hundred pound a night. You just put it on. Oh, and sorry, just to go back on that, we don't you, we do work with Airbnb, but it's probably about five percent of our income. Really? So we not we don't really do much with them at all. It's it's predominantly uh, Booking dot com, which in our opinion are much more sophisticated OTA, um, but also and much more powerful OTA, much bigger uh, yeah. and, and and direct. So, so what, what, what we thought when we first learned, we, right, okay, we, we, let's have a look at what else is in the area. And let's say, it was, let's say we're seeing two bed apartments in the area, 100 quid, put it on a nice five, right, we'll get work. And then we'd leave it. But that was totally wrong. Um, we, we, you, know, you, you can't leave your rates. You've got to keep adjusting them. And we, we kind of learned that. And then we started to learn and look at comparables. And, and then you've really got to do it if not every day, you've got to do it every, every two or three days, really, because the hotels who you are up against, they're constantly changing their practice. They have departments, don't yeah. they, full of people who, who are constantly monitoring the market. Mm. But then we, we, we then came across um, a revenue manager who's, um, who's a specialist in, in, in manipulating rates and looking at the manipulating the market, seeing what's going on, and who can go into the likes of booking.com and maximize and optimize your revenue. And at that point, I think the thing I want to share with you is that it, it, when, we took, when we took Morel on, um, it, it really opened our eyes how little we knew. Yeah. And I, and I believe that's typical pretty much of a lot of the kind of Facebook and social media circuit is that you kind of don't know what you don't know. Mm. Uh, and, and that lady, she, you know, she's been a, a revenue director for the Marriott, Best Western, and other people like that. You know, that's what she did. She's like an expert in what she did. It's what she does. Wow. And we realised that we actually didn't know much, John. Yeah. Uh, am, I, am I qualified to sit here and, and teach uh, and talk about revenue optimization? No, I'm not. I'll be honest. No, I'm not. Big, but I will tell you is that it was a big game changer for us to bring in an expert who did, yeah? So for everybody who's, who's listening, I would strongly suggest that you, you, you have a look at, at, at looking externally at one of these experts who can come into your business on a self-employed basis and they don't have to work full time, of course they don't, but they'll come and they'll, you know, however many units, you might have five units, they can come in and they can, they can start looking at your units and trying to, to deal with your bookings and, and optimize your, your revenue because that's what it's all about, isn't it? At the end of the day, if you don't get the money in, you're bust. Mm. That's it. So I think if I can, John, that's the way I'd like to answer that question really is, is that I'm not, I'm certainly no expert in, in, in revenue management and pricing. That's why we brought somebody in who is because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> that's the truth of it. Right. Interesting. So yeah, we're, we're, we're coming to the end of our interview here, but, um, yeah, just just wondered if if I mean you 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 obviously it, it, it's a very eventful kind of business. You you must have have kind of some some stories or or interesting kind of events that have gone gone on in there. Uh, is there is there anything that you that springs to mind? Yeah, one of the, I think one of the things I'd like to share is you know we've we've had so much if if you like fun with with some terrible guests. We had a really bad period of going through stolen cards. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, stolen cards. Booking online with stolen cards. Oh, car cards, right? Sorry, I thought you said cards. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. So we, you know, we, we. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, a, a quick example. One, one particular day, it was the, uh, it was some music awards in Leeds. Uh, the, these lads came up from 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 London, and they moved in. And our ha head housekeeper in Leeds at the time, it was about midday. She phoned us up and said. Look, they're in Amanda. I'm a bit worried. There's a lot of loud music coming. It's only midday. So um, she, we said, look, just go and knock on the door. And she knocks on the door. And the guy was really polite. He said, oh, I'm sorry. It was just the TV. Played a bit of music. I'll turn it down. Anyway, I went over because we were worried. If they were, that, if they were playing loud music at that time. So anyway, we went in. And there was a real smell of drugs. Um, and, and, and that sort of thing going on. And we were, we, we were quite worried. Um, but, you know, if we... If, it would be really naive to think that people don't smoke drugs or take drugs in our service departments. And, you know, of course, of course they do. It's the way of the world, isn't it? But um, we, 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 asked, we said to Vicky, have a walk by at night. Um, don't, don't approach them, just have a look. And it was quiet. Anyway, the next day, they were due to move out. 
so at 10 o'clock <coughs> so at 10 10 30 she couldn't get in it was it was locked the door was very barricaded so she's knocking on the door no answer knocking on the door no answer eventually this guy came to the door but but in the meantime she'd managed to push the door a little bit open it had been wedged by our washing machine and what they'd done they'd uncoupled it and wedged it in now we think they'd been on drugs and they were sort of comatose and and all the rest of it so we'd, we'd and they came to the door and said, oh, sorry, yeah, 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 we'll go in 10 minutes. We'll come and give you a shout and we'll, we'll, we'll go in. So anyway, she went down the corridor. 15 minutes later, she came back. What they'd done is they turned on the tap to the washing machine and they were flooding the place and they'd gone. Oh. Yeah, it was completely underwater. It was. It had started to come into the, to, in, in, into the hallway. It was going downstairs into the next floor. So it was wow. like panic stations. I was in Manchester, rushed over there. Massive panic on. We had people moving in at three o'clock. Uh, super stressful time. We got all this, these problems to deal with. They cut the washing machine. Um, so phoned a manager up. I said, charge, don't, because we take a £250 deposit. Stop the deposit. I will, no problem. Stop the deposit. Next day, uh, charge back. How can that be? And it was a stolen card. They just stole the card and they booked it through. It was four hundred and fifty pound, um, four hundred fifty pound booking, and we were getting lots and lots of these. John, we were getting really exposed to it because, and this is again just something I want to share with 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 listeners and readers. One of the biggest game changers for us was when we decided to move away from Stripe as a payment processor, whereby you just go on to what we call the magic button and press the magic button. It takes the payment. Mm-hmm. And we went on to World Pay 3D verification. I'm not wow. familiar with that. It's like if you go into a shop and it's a chip and pin. Yeah. They right. have to they put in, there's no going back on it. So there's we've we've cut down on so much of the bad in fact, pretty much all of the bad element that we were getting targeted with. Okay. Because as soon as you see that 3D, they know what they're doing. These guys know what they're doing. So as soon as it's not th- see the 3D verification, they don't book, they'll go on to somebody else. Um and and that was yeah that that was that was a big thing for us because it cut out so much of the damage the parties the problems the the um, the chargebacks the stolen cards it was a big thing. Brilliant, brilliant. So, yeah, oh, that's good to know. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. Okay, David. So I believe you've got a, a training event coming up very shortly, and uh, it sounds pretty cool. I'm uh, not going to be able to be there because I'm I'm thousands of miles away just now but uh, if you want to tell people a bit about what they can expect at that event and uh and then we'll we'll let people know how they can get involved if they want to yeah thanks thanks john yeah it's a two-day event at heathrow london um we are we, we basically amanda and i are going to teach the way in which we've moved from our difficult position of having a few units and um, where we, we, we struggled to be able to scale up and run what we call our ecosystem of businesses, which is the service accommodation business, the external housekeeping business, the sourcing business, the SA Angels administration business, the management business. And we've had to, obviously to do that, we've had to implement a lot of robust systems and procedures and obviously bring the resources in to do that. You know, we've got 15 people work, work with us now, uh, direct, full-time people, uh, plus our, what we call our power team on top of that. So we, and we've got some real robust systems, as I say. So we're going to be teaching everybody that. And the main, the main subjects are sourcing, the way we source to developers, uh, the way we then move that on. We can either do that ourselves or we can bring in joint venture partners or we can bring in what we call our, our investor partners. And they, they, they bring us sourcing fee in and we manage the units for them. So it's basically a business in a box for them. Uh, but for us, it's good because it's just another, another revenue stream, another arm of what we do. So I'm going to be teaching all that and about where to look for the developers and a little bit more in, in depth on all that and the contracts that we use. Um, Manda's going to be, and, and we've got a guest speaker, Morel, <coughs> excuse me, who's our revenue manager. She's going to be talk, they're going to be talking about revenue management. And it's a case of bring your laptops and your devices because, because we're going to make some changes there and then to your business. 
Um, we did a one-day event in Manchester in November. Uh, I was absolutely delighted. Uh, one of our one of our guests, Benjamin, he got his computer out and he dropped 110 pound booking for that night there, and then just implementing something Amanda taught. Uh, I then got a, an email, sorry, a, a Facebook message from a lady called Rahana who dropped a £986 book in, implementing something a man taught uh, the next day. So it's fantastic. So, you know, people got to bring the, bring the computers and, and, and the devices with them because we're going to be actually doing stuff and making changes to their business. So really, really make it more of the hotel type business rather than people kind of, you know, just, just, just putting a, a unit online and hoping for the best. We're then going to be talking about our systems about how we've battled against the scammers and the fraudsters, and also about how we've now moving away from the channel manager we first started with, which was a very kind of basic starter channel manager that a lot of people on, certainly on Facebook, still use. Um, and now we've moved on to moving into now PMS and a new a new uh, a new channel manager to have an integrated system to be able to move us on, and hopefully get onto the GDS and 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 uh, and and, and and systems like that. We're then going to be talking about operating. Uh, there was a time when, John, we were, we, we were kind of held at ransom by the local Mrs. Mop, um, who'd, you know, he'd come in and then let us down and we'd have to drop everything and go and clean an apartment 45 minutes away. We, you know, I can't stress how important good housekeeping and operations are. Um, we, we had a terrible time with it. But what we did, we realized how important it was. We set some procedures and, and systems in place. We've now run uh, over 60 units, not just for ourselves, but externally for the people across three cities. We're going to be sharing with people the systems and how we did that, because that is so important, um, and how we protect not only ourselves, but our cleaners from the refund hunters of this world. So those are the big four main areas that, that Amanda and I are going to be talking on. We've then got guest speaker, Kevin Wright, who's very well known in the, uh, in the, in the property circuit. He's going to be talking about commercial lending. So if you want to move, start moving out of rent to rent and you want to start buying those properties so that you've got that investment element of the business, then Kevin's your man. He's going to talk to you all about that. And ultimately then, you know, moving on to the bit, uh, the, the bed and breakfast and that kind of thing, the, the, the bigger the bigger properties. Uh, we've got Lee Pemberton. Uh, I guess a lot of people know Lee. He, he, he owns a friend of mine. He owns service lets. But he's going to be talking to us about his smart boutique model. Um, I think it's fantastic. This is where, you know, we, we want to do this. It's something we want to do in 2019, 2020. He's going to be talking to us about all that. Uh, as I say, we've got Morel, who's our revenue manager. She's an absolute expert. She's going to be talking to us. Uh, I've got two of our, our, our sort of mentees who gave, you know, everybody who goes on a property course, they want to um, they want to be able to give the job up, don't they, John? They gave their job up in eight months. Wow. And so proud of them. They did it. They now own three businesses. In two years, they own three businesses. They've got umpteen service departments. Um, they've pretty much done our ecosystem 360 degree model where they've got businesses that link in um, so proud of them. they're going to share their journey they're going to be there for people who want to talk to them um, we've got keenest uh, who are supporting us in the day so they're going to be there for the for the for the couple of days we've got fusion furniture supporting us as well so you can go and see those guys we've got andrew culbon um who's he he's Lisa, a leasing expert, but he's also, I believe, he's got the only product in the UK at the moment who will offer finance to rent to renters. So if you want to go and take five or ten units on, John, you can, they will look at you. And as long as you've got kind of 12 months history, they will look at funding you up to 50,000 quid so that you can start building your rent to rent business. It's fantastic. Um, so... So that's basically what we're doing. Um, we, we, it's going to be a tough weekend. We're going to be starting at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning. We're not going to finish till about eight o'clock on a Saturday night. But then we're going to go in the bar for a few drinks and networking and a few, and a few laughs and jokes. Um, the next day we run until six o'clock. Um, so it's going, to be, it's going to be full, absolute full on. So we're really excited about it. Um, and we've got a VIP package. Uh, we've got the general package which which is obviously come and spend the, spend the two the two days with us. We've got the VIP, which is lunch uh, with with ourselves and guest speakers as well. So um, yeah, we we're really excited about it, and thanks for the opportunity to, to talk about it. 
Awesome. Well, it sounds fantastic. And, and it definitely sounds like uh, you'll be teaching a lot of stuff that you probably won't be able to find anywhere else. Um, in, in terms of who this is for, uh, it sounds like definitely people who are already in SA or, um, you know, more experienced landlords might benefit for it. The people who wanted to kind of transition from, uh, you know, traditional buy to let model to service accommodation. But do you think uh, someone who's a fresh beginner or, or fairly new to it could benefit as well? Yeah, I do, John, because you know what? I wish I'd have had something like this when I started off. Um, we, you know, we, somebody who's, who's wanting to get going on it, then, you know, t- take the learnings from, from what we're teaching and then, you know, remember them and, and, and just implement them from the start. There is, there is a lot of advanced stuff in there, but there's also a lot of good practice to make a start mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and get moving in the right direction. There's no point setting off in the wrong direction. Sorry, can I just say that I just did miss something out, else out as well. Sure. We've got our accountant coming down, Andy. Um, the reason he's coming down is because we're going to be talking about VAT, which is a massive, a massive worry to service accommodation operators. It certainly was to us. Um, Tom's is the tour operator's margin system. Um, there's, there's a lot of people who are saying, oh, it's not applicable. There's a lot of people saying it is applicable. We've done it. We've gone on it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we spoke, Andy spoke to the revenue, uh, sorry, the HMRC on our, on our behalf, and we're satisfied that we qualify for it. They told us to go on it. Uh, long and short of it is it saved us a fortune. So we're going to be, we're not going to be, we're not, we're not telling people to go on it. We're just telling people why we went on it and what we understand about Tom's and about VAT and with, with the caveats, you know what, if you, if you, if you think there's something in it, go and take your own professional advice and speak to the HMRC yourselves. But I just want to share what, what we do. Yeah. Because it was, again, it was one of those big game changers for us, John. Okay. Sounds good. Um, brilliant. Okay. So if people are interested in finding out more and perhaps booking a ticket, what I'm going to do is there's going to be a, um, a form, a short form probably underneath this video or close by and if people just uh, stick the details in there and submit it then that will go straight through to yourself David. and uh, what will happen is is David will then uh, uh, yes probably pick up the phone to you and uh, and have a chat with you and just see if the, the event's right for you and, and get that booked for you if it's uh, a, if it's something you want to do so I'll do that and uh, just remind us when and where it is again once more yeah, okay, it's the 26th, it's Saturday the 26th and Sunday the 27th of January 2019. It's at the Thistle uh, London Heathrow. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty access- accessible. Um, and we're there for the two days. Brilliant, okay. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like a great way to, to kick off the, the new year for sure. So uh, if you're interested, folks, just put your details into the, into the form below and, uh, and they will, we'll get straight back to you. Okay. So thanks, David. And uh, yeah, I won't see you at the event, but hopefully uh, some people watching will. Thanks, John. Fantastic.